Now we're joined all the way from Ireland by super racer Revo, who's taken some time out, out to talk to us. He placed 61st out of 390 pilots from around the world with a beautifully smooth 48.2 lap time. You're going to find out what his fields were and what he plans to do for chapter number two. Hey, Revo, thanks for joining us, buddy. Hey, thanks for having me. How are you feeling about your performance in Chapter 1 of the D-Quad Fixation Tournament? Uh, my performance in Chapter 1 I, I feel is pretty good. I'm a 4S flyer. I don't play 6S. I like to keep it real. I like to keep it to real life physics and stuff like that. So for a 4S drone, I think my lap time is pretty good. I could have done better if I really, really tried to set that down. I could have probably got 2 tenths, 3 tenths faster. I don't know, but... Yeah, I am happy with my time. I think you could have gotten significantly faster because part of when we reviewed your race line, one of the things that we noticed you we were very disciplined about is that you're touching plastic through the entire lap. You're getting the most out of that quad that you're flying. You left nothing, <laughs> nothing back at home. Um, so definitely a faster quad would get you a chunk more time. It's amazing that you scored that at 4S. Wow! <laughs> Do you fly that in real life? Uh, yes, it's it's spec to my real life drone. So if I go to play out with a simulator, it will be like real life. So if I go to do a race in real life or a freestyle in real life, it will be exactly like that. What is your real life drone? It's a Nazgul V2. So it is, and uh, it's a digital. So I'm flying with the digital unit, the DJI Digital, mm -hmm. and it's uh, it's an air unit. So. Uh, I have it tuned, I have it spec to the how I want it, and it matches pretty well in the similar to how it feels in real life. Oh, well, you showed us your quad a little bit ago in our pre-interview. It's up there on the wall be behind his shoulder on the top right. You guys can see it. And it, other than the color screen, it's, it's the motor, uh, motor landing pads are purple in liftoff. Yours are pink in real life. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, how, how similar does it feel for you? It's pretty accurate. There's some things that might be a little off, but honestly, you could correct for it in real life. But I got as close as I could, and I'm pretty happy with it. How did you prepare for this race? Um, I've, to be honest, I didn't do much preparing for this race. The one that I'm really trying for is the Chapter 2 race. Chapter 1, I kind of got into it, was really surprised how easy it was. It wasn't a really complicated track. Mm -hmm. And I just sent it, and I did it. I did it a couple of times, and seeing how fast I could get a lap time in it on a 4S, and I, I think I did pretty good. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I would again say that you did pretty great because on footage review, what we saw that yeah, you weren't as tight as the top end of the leaderboards, and your throttle control, your altitude management was a little up and down, but that was two to four second stops. Right, like when we saw those differences, the same people on number five to number ten, um, who weren't as tight or who had a little bit less altitude management, they were only two to four seconds behind the leaders. You had a four S squad. I think G Man had better watch out once we get some six S power <laughs> out for you. What's your history with tournaments? Is this the first time that you've competed? Do you always compete? Um. This is really my first time competing in the actual tournament. I was told by a couple of friends of mine that I'm in the server with uh, that they do the tournaments and I should try it. So I, I gave it a go and see how quick I could get a time. And I feel like if I was to do it again, I would do pretty good. Well, I would mo well, I would most definitely agree with that. Given that this is if this is your first tournament percent of performance and your, your, your position is in the top 20% of racers and we have a lot of... You know what the prize is for this, don't you, Revu? Prize for this one? No, I don't. I know a couple of prizes, I think, for Chapter 2, but not for the Chapter 1. So the prizes for... Uh, the, there's going to be a standard prize for each chapter, which is for the first two chapters, number one gets two D-Quad fixation frames along with a bunch of spares. Number two gets a D-Quad fixation frame and a bunch of spares. And uh, number one to number three get a chance to win a Liftoff Pro League Championship badge. It's a fantastic little silver medallion that they send you. Um, those are the things we'll be able to win every month on every chapter. But for chapter 12, 
uh, and this is why this is why it's all the more impressive your position because lots of people are going to be competing for that chapter 12 prize chapter 12 will be racers the best racers from the first 11 chapters invited to fly in that chapter and the winner gets a year long real world sponsorship from the quad so you walk away not just with all these frames you walk away sorted for a year uh, backed up by a real world uh, drone manufacturer how does that does that motivate you to get more on board at those yeah i might have to step it up to a six s and see how well i could do <laughs> considering this was my first kind of attempt in a pro league tournament i did okay i'd say and if i was to put my head down and practice and try and get better and actually compete for really good times tight corners good corner management and everything else in that i think i could i could get there i could be one of the top ones I, I would definitely not 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 put that by, not, uh, you know I would definitely treat you as a contender because you are getting the most out that that throttle stick doesn't even come down to 95% even even yeah. G man for a moment in the chicane who's number 1 has a breath of 95% you don't even have a breath brother you ready for success i i my name is abdul alim i'm a professional i hereby clear you for 6s rippage brother you ready you are ready for that 6s how are you preparing for chapter 2 you mentioned you're spending more time preparing for that chapter 2 yes i've done a lot a lot of practice races i've been trying to get a really good line in chapter 2 i'm still on the 4s but i'm actually currently fourth place in chapter 2 on the leaderboard so i'm with a 1 112 minute time and i'm just below fly fpv currently at a mm -hmm. 56 second time He's on a 6S. Oh yeah, he's on a 6S and uh, FPV Fly is practices immensely, believes in grinding and he's putting in a daily time into that track. So given that you're just one position down from him with 20 days to go, I think he better watch out for that number three spot. I think I may switch it to 6S and see what I can do. Have, have a feel for it. We're definitely going to be looking forward to seeing what your chapter 2 performance is with more power. How do you feel about, you, you mentioned that chapter 1 felt like a really easy track. What are your feels about chapter 2 as a track? I really like chapter 2 as a track. It's really complicated. There's a certain part of it where it's marquee with a load of benches. On that part, you have to be perfect to be able to fit through it. And if you don't, you're going to hit them benches or hit the top of that marquee and that's not going to end well with proper damage you're yeah. going to be vibrating all over the place and you're not going to be able to control your drone for the rest of the race so that you need to be really precise especially under the truck there's a part where it's a truck and you have to go through it and then straight under it and it's a very small gap and you have to make that quick enough to make up for time yeah and, and neither of those straps give you any space to actually line up and go wide right uh, both of them have barriers right behind, so you can't go wide and line it up. Yes, there's a lot of trees as well, so even if you wanted to go wide on some of the tracks, you're going to get hit by branches, and then again, you're going to have your prop damage. So it's it's a very complicated track, mm -hmm. and I think I like it for that reason. You have to set, you have three laps to set, and you have to do that without damaging your quad at all. So I think it'll be really good. Do you take out time to watch the others racers lines as part of your prep to see what their strategy is or do you make your own? I watch some of the racers lines to see what they do and see if I can make any improvements to mine. I have I've kind of come up with my own lines and I've improved my best time so far on the forest is an 18 second lap time which is pretty good if I can hit that consistently I will be under the minute I'll be Mm -hmm. So one minute, so that that should be good. And uh, I wonder, I wonder if I switch to the success, will I be able to set close to the maybe number two, number three? But uh, number one, I think, is very well held. <laughs> it's a, it's an impressive time. Very well held so far. Finzi got another second off it uh, and got it to thirty eight seconds as part of his first week. But he got twenty days to go, brother. And I think this is going to be a very interesting experiment as well for people to see, uh, for people to make their choices between 4S and 6S. Um, because unlike the first chapter where you needed full speed all the time, for this one, as you pointed out very correctly, there are a lot of technical trappy bits. 
it doesn't matter how fast can your quad go but how fast can you send the quad without destroying it so it may yeah. have to be that 4s and a lower camera tilt may take away the day in this one we'll really find out piloting chops from our competitors Throttle management on that map is, is very strict. You have to be up and down with the throttle the whole time. You can't be punching out full power the whole way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Lo lots of lots of technically bits to line up. All the best for chapter number two, Revu. Given that this was your first ever performance, I think absolutely massively done. You're definitely someone that the top leaderboards need to watch out for once we put that 6S battery onto your quad. Have you flown 6S in real life? I've actually never flown 6S in real life. My oh. quad can actually take 6S, I just need to upgrade the motors. Uh, I, 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 was in, I was in that boat for a good year and I flew 4S for all that time and my thought process was, how much more powerful can it possibly be? I mean, look at her, she's a banshee right now. But brother, oh, you want that 6S in your life. Oh, you want it. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's unlimited power and it's it feels... The lift off boom, you're gonna feel it in real life. I would highly recommend get that, get that in your life, brother. The 6S batteries are very expensive, so I'd have to start saving, so I would. Mm, well, may, hey, maybe, maybe you'll win a bunch of prizes through this tournament and you'll be able to put that towards your, uh, towards your real world fleet. Thank you so hopefully, much for hopefully. taking, uh, thank you so much for taking out the time for us, Revu. All the best for chapter number two. We'll be watching out for you, brother. And the top of the leaderboard better be watching out for you as well. Otherwise, you're going to sneak past him on that last turn. <laughs> no problem. Thank you very much for having me. You're very welcome. Have a wonderful day. Happy flying. You too.